coming up in Jamaica Magazine today. Tips to help you beat the summer heat. Restrict activities to early morning and late evening at the cooler times of the day. We also take you through the steps of making an appeal to the Revenue Appeals Division and remember Nation Builder on the anniversary of his birth. Hello, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Stay with us. Water is precious. So we encourage everyone to practice the four R's of water conservation. Always remember to reduce your use of water wherever possible. Replace water wasting devices with water savings devices. Reuse water wherever possible. And wherever leaks are found, please repair them and repair them quickly. Don't delay. Practice the four R's of water conservation today. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Thursday, July 4. Scheduled domestic flights are now available between the Ian Fleming International Airport in St. Mary and the Sangsta International Airport and aerodromes in Montego Bay. This after the Ministry of Transport partnered with Howard Levy, the owner of Jam Airlink Express, to launch domestic flights in the country yesterday. Transport Minister Robert Montague says the flights will also serve Ocho Rios and its surrounding areas. This is a new opportunity for the people in the community because not only will you get to Kingston, Negril, Montego Bay, or Port Antonio faster, there is also an opportunity for the young people to become trained as pilots, aviation engineers, instrumentation, um, air traffic controllers, a brand new industry as open up for the young people. Minister Montague says plans are also in place to build a storefront at the Ian Fleming International Airport so persons can purchase items such as clothing or food. This move comes just weeks after he announced plans to restart scheduled domestic flights in Jamaica. The Ministry of Education is releasing students' individual scores for the inaugural Primary Exit Profile PEP examination. Minister with Responsibility for the Education Portfolio, Carl Samuda, made the announcement in the House of Representatives on Tuesday. We are expecting that that will be released next week. The results for the secondary levels, that is, receiving schools, will be available online by 6 a.m. on the 5th of July. So you can go online and you will see these scores. PEP replaces GSAT as the placement examination for students entering secondary school. For the first time also, the ministry adopted the scaled score model and provided students with a detailed report on their performance rather than raw percentages. But in Parliament this week, Mr. Samuda said the individual scores were being released to dispel any doubt about the performance of the students or those administering the examination. And that should satisfy a number of persons who have been apprehensive and have adopted a posture of doubt. Mr. Speaker, the results from students' performance in the various subject areas shows that less than 10% of all students are at the beginning level. He said that the 10% of students categorized at the beginner's level would benefit from intensive academic support at grade seven. Energy Minister Favel Williams says government will be ensuring greater oversight of the state-owned refinery Petrojam as it moves to implement recommendations from the Auditor General's report. Minister Williams says Petrojam's Board of Management is to lay out a plan for implementing the Auditor General's recommendations. As part of that, focus will be placed on strict adherence to procurement guidelines. The Auditor General found that MSET and parent company PCJ operated almost hands-off. This, since we've been there, has not and will no longer be the case going forward. Minister Williams was speaking during a recent press conference at Jamaica House to reveal the findings of the Petrojam Review Committee. The Auditor General's report on Petrojam was tabled in the House of Representatives in December 2018. It revealed a number of deficiencies which Minister Williams says are being addressed. 
The National Land Agency and Jamaica Defense Force have signed a Memorandum of Understanding which will facilitate hydrographic surveys of the seabed in the country's territorial waters. The agreement will be executed under the umbrella of the National Hydrographic Committee, which is a government-appointed group responsible for dealing with hydrography and maritime spatial data. The hydrographic surveys of the seabed in Jamaica's territorial waters will be conducted using a vessel from the JDF Coast Guard's fleet. The survey equipment has been provided by the United Kingdom Hydrographic Office through the Commonwealth Marine Economics Program. Acting Senior Director of Surveys at the NLA, Major Patrick Aiken, says the exercise can be used for numerous activities, including determining the accuracy during a dredging exercise. Director General of the Maritime Authority of Jamaica and a Chairman of the National Hydrographic Committee, Rear Admiral Peter Brady, adds that having modern surveys will make ship navigators more confident of entering Jamaican waters. He says the surveys will also provide key information for potential investors in commodities such as marine oil and gas. The Senate on Friday approved the Public Procurement Registration and Classification of Suppliers Regulations 2019. It's meant to make it easier to do business and ensure inclusiveness for a wide cross-section of Jamaicans, including micro, small and medium-sized business owners. The regulations were piloted by Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Senator Pernell Charles Jr. He says they are critical to getting the reformed public procurement landscape operational. The Public Procurement Registration and Classification Regulations 2019 will fully enable the Public Procurement Commission to fulfill its functioning, functions of registering and classifying suppliers, continuously um, assessing suppliers for capacity and performance, establishing and managing also the activities of the sector committees, among other functions. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. announced a 16-point liberalization program last year. No new taxi license will be issued for Kingston and St. Andrew. For known bus routes, only buses will be allowed so that to get a license, you have to have a bus to operate on a bus route. There will be no crushing of seized vehicles. We have taken that out. The takeover service within the industry will now be allowed, but the Transport Authority must approve the new purchaser. This service allows people who are in the industry and wish to cash out and leave to sell their buses and business and the Transport Authority will now transfer the license provided that the purchaser qualifies in his or her right. All vehicles in the sector must be fitted with a GPS tracker by the 1st of April 2020. But new applicants must be fitted with one from now. However, the owner of the vehicle will be required to monitor themselves. They will not be required to provide a constant fee to the Transport Authority, but the owners must make the information available to the Transport Authority and the police or any authorized body if needed, because the owners will now be required to keep the fee for at least 30 days. The discounts from the insurance companies will continue some insurance companies for vehicles fitted with a GPS tracker. Last week we told you about the role of the Revenue Appeals Division. We are continuing that conversation, but this time focusing on the process of making an appeal. Commissioner Dr. Delary Staple Chambers takes us through the steps. Welcome to Finance Matters, a production of the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service. I'm your host, Daniel Pasley, and today we'll be focusing on the process, or should I say the appeals process, within the Revenue Appeals Division. And today I have with me a very special guest, Commissioner of the Revenue Appeals Division, Dr. Delary Staple Chambers. Thank you so much for coming back on our program. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. So, Commissioner, tell us. What does the process entail? All right, so once you have made an appeal, um, the first thing we do at um, RAD is to assess 
the, to profile the matter, to assess the complexity of it. So um, if we deem from the initial outset that the matter is a simple matter, then we, we funnel it to the fast track or the um, tier one process, where in the law it is described as an informal hearing, meaning that we don't need you to come in and, and um, to give evidence orally and be questioned but we will accept your written submission and the evidence that you have presented on paper. And if we need any clarification, then we may call you and have discussions over the phone. So it's pretty informal. And those tend to be turned around in a very short space of time. Um, once the matter is a little bit more complex right. um, and may involve parties such as an attorney or legal firm, then um, we may deem it to be one that must be heard using the formal process. And if that is the case, we will invite you to a hearing. Now, the hearing date has to be negotiated between the parties, meaning that the revenue authority, as, long as, the tax, as well as the taxpayer, has to agree to the date. It has to be amenable to both sides. And um, once we have an agreement and we schedule a hearing, then both parties are expected to be in attendance. Um, for that formal process, you are required to make oral submissions as well as written um, and produce evidence and are, documents. Are there a certain number of submissions that you need no, to No, when I give? say submission, I mean you, you make out your case. Right. So you, um, you would indicate what, what, what is wrong with the assessment, what, where you think the commissioner erred, um, what your evidence, your books and your records are saying. And um, the other side, which is the revenue authorities, they get the chance to do the same thing. The taxpayer also get to question the uh, representative of the revenue authority and vice versa. So it's, um, it's almost like we are in the middle mediating right. and both parties are able to um, put their cards on the table. Um, our role is to be the finder of fact. So um, we hear both sides, we consider all the evidence, and we, um, we make a decision on the side of the facts and the law. Um, once the hearing, the formal hearing is over, right. then um, we will determine at that point whether we need additional evidence based on what was submitted in the hearing. And um, if that is required, we'll give you time to submit such evidence. And then we will, also, we will review all the evidence that we have gathered and we will indicate when we are ready to make a decision. Um, the, the law mandate that once we have indicated that we are ready to rule, that that decision should be handed down in 60 days. Wow. So um, we have 60 days to prepare the written decision and to um, dispatch the same to the parties. So that's the formal process. But there's also another mechanism that is provided by the legislation where um, the case for both parties is not very strong. Um, but, um, and so we may have to ask both parties to negotiate a settlement. What the settlement, uh, what the negotiation of settlement does is allow the parties to go off and have discussions together. Okay. And then they may come to a common agreement to say, okay, um, we have agreed that this is the amount that, we, that is to be paid. All the decisions that we make at the RAD is based on the facts presented by both parties and the law stipulated in the principal legislation depending on the tax type that is appealed. Thank you once again, Commissioner, for coming on our program. You're welcome. So on behalf of the hardworking production team, I'm Daniel Pasley, and I'll see you for another episode of Finance Matters next time. Have a great day. The following is brought to you by MOCA, the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency with the kind support of NIA and USAID. Criminal minds think they are cunning. The major organized crime and anti-corruption agency have them running. Your friend has shown, come scam. Take time running. Now we ready for the ops. Drive up for your block. Step out now we block. Cyber take up for your lap. Pull up every lap. No evidence to drop. We put it in a cuff so now we have the underground. Sin you say scam, you better look out for it. When you move corrupt, better look out for it. They say you get wet, look out for it. Look out for it. Look out for it. From you say scam, you better look out for it. Oh,
your move corrupt, better look out for me. Things that you get wet, look out for me. Look out for me. Look out for me. The proceeding was brought to you by MOCA, the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency with the kind support of NIA and USAID. This summer is predicted to be a very hot one and persons are being advised by the Ministry of Health and Wellness to take measures to stay cool. Jamaica, like other Caribbean countries, has a heat season that runs from May to October each year. This year, some very high temperatures have been recorded. The Ministry of Health and Wellness would like to advise the public that these high temperatures can adversely affect the health of the population and each individual. These adverse conditions include heat or muscle cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat strokes, which can be fatal. Symptoms of these heat illnesses include headaches, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, altered mental status, and fainting. Some persons are more susceptible to these high temperatures. These persons include the elderly, persons who are overweight or obese, children, infants and children younger than six years of age, and persons with chronic illnesses such as high blood pressure and diabetes. Here are some tips. Restrict activities to early morning and late evening at the cooler times of the day. Drink water liberally, more water than you normally do before, during and after vigorous activities. Hydrate with cool water, especially when hot and humid. Wear lightweight, light-colored, loose-fitting clothing made of breathable fabrics. Avoid crowded locations if possible. Consider exercising indoors. Ensure your homes or environments are well ventilated. Protect yourself from the flu virus. Visit your nearest health center or doctor to get the flu vaccine. Cover your mouth and nose when coughing and sneezing. Wash your hands regularly with soap and water or by using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Avoid the spread of germs by not touching your eyes, mouth, or nose. And be sure to regularly disinfect surfaces and objects that are used often. Remember, your health is your responsibility. Up next, recognizing the life and work of a nation builder and national hero, Norman Washington Manley, on this, the anniversary of his birth. The national flag flies proudly beside the childhood home of the right excellent Norman Washington Manley symbolizing his status as a national hero and his contribution to Jamaica's journey to nationhood. His involvement in the country's campaign to independence was rooted in his resentment of the lack of rights for the poor working class. He was a man who devoted much of his life to looking after what we call the underdog. That was one of the things which drove him relentlessly as a political leader. And his advocacy, which had begun years earlier, took on a more defined role when he rose to lead the newly formed People's National Party in 1938. We have to see uh, Norman Manley's role in 1938 as a period in which he demonstrated his capacity for reconciliation and negotiation. As a statesman, Manley refused to be satisfied with the universal adult suffrage in 1944. He had bigger dreams, among them to see Jamaica take full control of its own affairs. So he became deeply involved in the move to develop a new constitution and the fight for full independence from Britain. Norman Manley believed that the organization of the people in political parties would be the instrument through or the vehicle through which Jamaica would be able to decolonize itself from the dominance of British rule. He tried to get a constitution that would reflect both the aspirations of the Jamaican people but would also allow for that system to operate in a harmonious way. 
that would ensure the full participation of the citizenry consistent with a parliamentary democracy. As leader of the People's National Party, he got his first taste of victory in 1955 when Jamaicans went to the polls. It was a vindication of all that he had campaigned for. He regarded it as a mandate to put in place programs that would result in the social transformation and the economic growth of Jamaica. The national hero and chief minister left an extensive legacy. In addition to his role in obtaining universal adult suffrage in 1944, N.W. Manley also founded the National Workers' Union in 1952. Two years later, in 1954, he led efforts to secure executive powers for elected representatives. It was also under Norman Manley's leadership that Jamaica achieved full internal self-government in 1959, a precursor to political independence that would come three years later. With Manley at the helm, the government established the Bank of Jamaica, the Development Bank of Jamaica, and the College of Arts, Science and Technology cast, now the University of Technology. And among the indelible contributions which he has made to the entire Jamaican society was the granting of 2,000 free places in secondary schools during the 1950s. His legacy also includes the Small Business Loan Board, the Jamaica Welfare Limited, now called the Social Development Commission, the Foundation of Youth Service, and the success in securing land tenure for farmers. Manley's dedicated service to Jamaica earned him the Order of National Hero, the highest award to be bestowed on a citizen. Revered as the father of the nation, Manley was an inspiring leader who touched the lives of Jamaicans home and abroad, making an indelible mark internationally and in the region. In his final speech in 1969, he asserted that the mission of his generation was to accomplish political power for the black masses of the people from which he sprang. Mission accomplished, he declared. And having accomplished his mission, Norman Washington Manley died on September 2, 1969. step of wanting to get empowerment and be empowered is you must never be satisfied with the way you are. You must always be seeking to improve. So you must always be seeking more, seeking better, because you can always do better. You can always improve. And I believe that sometimes in our society, we don't always encourage people to improve. Even in our household, we tend to say, well, you're just like your daddy. Meaning to say you're not going to be better than what your father or parent has achieved. You go on like you're better than people meaning to say that we must all stay at the lower stage and not seek to improve ourselves. In fact, you know, there is this thing in our culture that makes it appear as if, if someone is trying to improve themselves, they are doing something bad. That is true, right? You? When what we should be doing is to applaud people 
who work hard and achieve. Right? Yes, that's what we should do. But somehow in our culture, we have turned it upside down. And it is very pervasive in the classroom because you see what happens is it provides cover for people who are lazy and people who don't want to change and people who are set on a pathway to failure. So they don't want anyone doing better than the average because then they will have to put out a little bit more effort. Now if that is allowed to be the common standard in the society, then our society will never improve. So, one of the things I want to give you today is that you must never be ashamed of success. And you must always seek to be the best at what you do. To be excellent. So no make water sickle in open container For them a read up and got a danger Hush them out, run them away Slap them with the zapper and down them with spray Use mosquito net and mosquito screen Protect your household now make them come in If you no want pop down and fenke fenke If you bone mosquito and run with dengue If pain lick your head and your joints and your eye And you want fever meat and your temperature high It could be dengue, don't hesitate See a doctor, don't self-medicate For some pain killer can make you bleed And you will try to recover and no succeed We now want pop down and fenke fenke Mosquito and run with dengue. A message from the Ministry of Health. As we close today's show, we ask that you stay connected via our website, jis.gov.jm. And while you're online, send your feedback to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm or via tweet at JIS News. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.